Hey guys, welcome back to Wheeling with Wally. Today I'm going to be changing out my steering gearbox. My old gearbox kind of is a little worn out. The gears in there, they just get worn down with time and bigger tires don't help. So when I'm driving, it kind of drives like a boat. There's a lot of like minor correction in the steering wheel with not a whole lot of wheel movement and it should be pretty tight. Like if you turn the wheel, it should turn the tire. And when those gears get worn, you don't get that. So you kind of get that floating feel like you're kind of driving a boat. So what I've done is I've ordered a Redhead steering gearbox, which is supposed to be a pretty good brand. It's, it is a little pricey, but I think it's going to be worth it. And I'm pretty excited to get it put on there. So here's the Redhead steering gearbox. And this thing looks pretty good quality, has a nice paint job on it. And it is made in the USA, which is always a plus in my book. So the company will also take your old steering gear box as a core and refund, uh, I think it's $300, $350, depending on the condition of your core. So that's one thing to keep in mind when you're looking at the initial price. And one other thing with that is you want to get it sent back to them fairly quickly because after a while they won't accept it for the full return and then eventually they won't give you anything back on it if it's been months. So it's already been a couple weeks for me, so I'm going to try and get this done pretty quick and shipped off so I don't just waste $300. Another thing I purchased to do this job are the hoses that connect to the steering gearbox. I figure if I'm in there, I might as well replace them or at the very least have them on hand in case they're in bad condition or something happens to them while I'm doing the swap. And then I also picked up this little kit on Amazon. This is a ball joint separator and tie rod in remover kit, but mainly what I'm going to use it for are these two guys and that's to help pull my pitman arm off because those can kind of be a nightmare. So I think this will help. Hopefully my pitman arm isn't too bad because it has a newer pitman arm I put on there with my uh, one ton uh, stinky fab aluminum steering. So I'm hoping that it comes off fairly easy, but I did pick this up just in case. So I'll drop a link down in the description for all of that stuff I just mentioned in case you guys want to get it too. And yeah, I guess uh, with that said, let's go ahead and dive in because the clock is ticking. So one of the first things I'm going to do is jack the Jeep up and then pull that front and driver's side wheel off. So I've got a little more room to work down there. It's not necessary to pull the wheel off. It's just going to make it a little more comfortable for me to work on it. The main part of what holds the steering gearbox on are these three bolts right here. And then I've also got my steering gearbox skid plate I put on a while ago that's held on by that bolt. So that's all gonna have to come off. But I think what I'm gonna do before I take these bolts out is disconnect the lines up top from the uh, power steering reservoir. And that way I've got it not hanging off those lines when I actually take the bolts out that support it. Cause that thing is heavier than it looks. Uh, I don't know the exact weight, but just holding it, I mean, it's it's got some heft to it. So you don't want that dropping and ripping your lines, especially if you're not replacing them like I am. But then the other thing that we have to worry about is the pitman arm attached to the drag link here. So we'll have to disconnect that as well. So here is a quick look at where the lines come up from the steering gear box to the reservoir. You've got this line that hooks around and then it is actually bolted in right there. So you'll have to unscrew that one. And then it's kind of hard for you guys to see. The other one is just kind of hose clamped on to the back here. So you got to pull that one off as well. Okay, so I'm going to start by removing this power steering line and it is a five eighths. Oh, that immediately smashed my finger. <laughs> this is probably going to make a little bit of a mess too and like a little bit of fluid. So prepare yourselves for that. I'm just going to let it leak like a monster and then throw down some absorbent afterwards, I guess. Oh, yeah. yeah. Come on, flooding out. Oh. Well, let's just dump in power steering fluid right now. That's fine. It's just uh, right on top of my axle and jack. It'll be right. 
Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is remove the three bolts that are holding my steering gearbox skid plate in place, and then that'll give me better access to everything. I'm not going to remove all three of these yet because I don't want that to just fall down. <laughs> these three bolts are 5 8 but currently I'm just removing this one because it's holding the skid plate on. That is a long bolt. And then the next two kind of go up into my bumper down here. Uh, you can't really see them, but they're two different styles of bolt. One's a little uh, eight millimeter kind of hex head. So I'm gonna take that one out. Okay. Whew. Got it just the rest of the way. If anyone's curious, this is a poison spider uh, skid plate. It's one of the first skid plates I ever bought for this Jeep. Actually, it's the first skid plate I ever bought for the Jeep. So the next thing to do is to pull this cotter pin out so I can take the castle nut off and then I can uh, drop the drag link down. And then I think we're good to take out the bolts that hold the gearbox in. And it still has the uh, steering shaft connected to it so it shouldn't fall. So I'm gonna lower it down and then maybe take that off or I might look and see if I can disconnect it first. I haven't really decided. But for this step, we're gonna straighten this cotter pin out and then uh, push it out and then take the castle nut off. There we go. And there is now power steering fluid on everything. <laughs> what a nightmare. So we'll grab a crescent wrench. Oh, my finger. <laughs> you know, actually, now I'm thinking about it, this is going back on the next one. Maybe I should just pull this off and leave that on there. Oh no, my crescent wrench isn't big enough. See, what I'm doing here, kids, is uh, using the wrong size socket to try and take this off. And it worked. I don't recommend it. Do not recommend it. I guess I could stick a puller on that and see what happens. Oh. Well, that's beautiful. Okay. Not bad. Uh, I'm hoping this comes off mildly easy because this is a new Pitman arm that was put on like a year ago. So it should come off easy. If not, I will just go ahead and take a torch to it and warm it up, and then it should just come off, no problem. It came off nice and easy. So that should be everything but the uh, steering shaft there. So I think I'm just gonna take these bolts out, lower it down, and then I can disconnect that shaft. Okay, uh, when you're on the third bolt, I would strongly recommend bracing it and being ready because it is heavy, like I said. Okay. Uh, that was not wanting to turn with my impact. So one little trick that I do every now and then, uh, not like this is me specific, this is probably a common thing, but I turn it to tighten to kind of tighten it just a little bit and kind of break whatever was holding it loose, a little bit of rust, dirt, debris, whatever. And then I went back to loosening it and it broke it loose that way. So if you guys are having trouble, that might help you. Okay, this should lower, I think. Oh, yeah, there it goes. Oh. So here's that steering shaft going into the gearbox. And if you see right here, let me just move that. Uh, there's a bolt and that tightens that clamp on there to hold it together. So I need to loosen this bolt and then the whole thing should come loose. So I managed to get a half inch socket on there. It was a little snug, so I'm not sure if it was meant to be a half inch or if that's just because of the rust, but I'm gonna try and uh, break this loose and try not to break a leg when I do it because it might drop on me. So now I got that bolt all the way out of the uh, steering shaft, that little clamp that was on there. 
So it's still stuck on there pretty good, so I'm trying to get it off. I'm going to try some pickle forks here. Hopefully I can get it on there and spread this off of there, but I don't, I don't know. It's on there pretty good. Ow! Started looking too much at other stuff instead of the uh, thing I was hitting. I do think it's moving a little bit, maybe. Let me get a bigger hammer. Always, always have a bigger hammer. So close now. So close. Back to the pickle. That's got to be almost there. This is working out pretty good. I'll drop a link to the pickle forks down in the description too if you guys want them. off that was a uh, I wouldn't call it a piece of cake but it was something so here's one of my new hoses that I bought it came with a little o-ring I'm just going to stick it over the end here and then I've got all kinds of steering fluid power steering fluid laying all over the ground here so I'm just gonna dip my finger in it and just put a little bit on this o-ring here just to uh, kind of keep it wet. I never like to put these on dry and try and cram them in places. You can tear them up that way. So I'm going to go ahead and get both of these uh, screwed into the new steering gearbox and then I can start to uh, run those up and get the new steering gearbox mounted. Okay so here is the old steering gearbox. Here is the new one. You can see where the hoses connect here and then you can see on this side we've got plugs. So one of the first things we're going to do is pull those plugs out. The top one here is the hose that doesn't have threads on both sides. So it's the one I added that little O-ring to. So I'm going to stick it in and roughly just try and keep the same angle that the old one had. Snug this down nice and good. The other hose I have right here. Um, this blue side should go up top, this red side should be on the bottom. Just unscrew this off of the thread. I've got a little more power steering fluid to rub on there. For your reference, it probably would have been easier to do the bottom one first. Probably would have been a lot easier to do the bottom first. Okay. Ah, there we go. All right, tighten this down. Okay, I think that's on there nice and tight. So now that I've got the hoses on there, I'm going to go ahead and remove the bolts for the mounting. They included bolts on here not to use for mounting, but they included them in the mounting holes to keep the threads from getting messed up and shipping or you know storage. So if you flip this over, you'll see these three guys in here. One, two, and three. They just come out. These are just bolts they stuck in there to keep the threads clean. So I think this part's going to be an absolute struggle. I haven't really decided how I'm going to do it yet. But uh, I need to get the steering gearbox up here. I don't know if it's better to try and mount it first before I try and put that on, or if I should try and put this on first and then align it. I really just don't know. <laughs> oh, it's going to be interesting. This is the orientation it goes on with the big guy down here at the bottom, and this guy goes on that steering shaft. So maybe I'll start with trying to get that somewhere in the right position. This is heavy. Okay. Oh man. Like it wants 
Still on. Ow. Ow. Oh. Holy shit. That is like all the way. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's on there. Uh, let me clean the dirt off of this. Put this back on. All right, I grabbed a half inch uh, ratcheting wrench so I could get in here because I could not get the ratchet in there. So one thing I forgot to mention that I want to add real quick is I did put a bunch of anises on there. That way, if I ever have to take this off again, it should come off pretty easy. <sighs> that should be pretty tight. Okay. All right, so I don't know. Now I guess we can uh, lean it up and stick a couple of the mounting bolts through it. Okay, guys, I added a little bit of light for you because it's starting to get dark out. But now that the uh, steering shaft is connected, I'm going to push it back up here and start to put in a mounting bolt. <clears throat> or at least try to. Oh, man. What am I hitting on already? So that new hose I just put on there is hitting on my radiator for whatever reason. Let's see if I can turn this around. So what you guys can't see right now is I'm bending the metal part of those new lines to match kind of what the old ones look like. That way, hopefully, I can get this to mount up right. Because it is hitting. Okay, so I kind of got it up there now, so let's feed a bolt through. Just help hold it so I don't drop this on my face. I'm going to stick a little anti seize on these as well. A little dab of anti seize on that one. All right, that'll hold for now. Um, this one I'm going to leave out or, you know, mostly out because that is what's going to help hold my skid plate on when I put it back on. So I'm not going to tighten that one yet. And then with these two, I'm going to torque them to spec in a moment. I don't know the torque spec off the top of my head, so I have to look it up. But I just want to get it secure while I get the hoses and stuff run up. OK, so before I do the hoses, I'm going to stick the pitman arm back on here. And again, just because why not? I'm going to put a little dab of anises and a few spots on this just to uh, potentially make it easier in the future to remove if I need to. Future Justin will thank me. All right, again, I don't really have the right size socket, so not the uh, best example, but I tapped it in here and it's in decent. So I'm going to push this up there, start to thread it on, and then run it down with the uh, impact. And then again, I'll look at the torque specs. I will torque it to spec afterwards. So how hard is this going to be to get lined up? Probably a pain. So I'm just going to take the pitman arm off real quick and put it on there first. Okay guys, so it would have been easier just to take the pitman arm off the drag link. So I went ahead and did that. It wasn't hard, but uh, I had to put the castle nut back on top and run it down to the flat. And then I just tapped it with a hammer a few times and it popped the pitman arm off and kind of pushed the drag link out. So I got that off. So now I'm just going to line it up independently up here and then reconnect it. This makes way more sense. I should have done this since the beginning, uh, but I thought I was saving myself a little bit of trouble and I just like usual made it worse than it needed to be. In your uh, pitman arm here, you've got some big flats, uh, four of them at each uh, left, right, top, and bottom. And then the rest of them are just nice teeth. So you want to line the flats up with the uh, big flats up here. And these two lines on the bottom correlate with two of them. So that's what I'm going to try and do real quick, if I can get my head in here, is just take it and line it up. I think that could be it. One thing I kind of messed up when I was trying to do it the other way was I kind of ran it down a little too hard on the flats so the teeth on this are harder than this and it cut new grooves on those flats uh, a little bit so it didn't go all the way but now I'm just trying to 
line it up correctly. It should work, but we'll see. I'm going to run it down a little bit more, uh, and then I'm going to take it back off and put the locking washer on. I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to stick the locking washer on and then run this down, hopefully the final time. Now I can fight with all this stuff. Okay. Okay, so I've got some threads sticking out, so I know I ran it down pretty good this time. Okay guys, it's the next day now. I went to Lowe's last night and picked up a giant adjustable wrench so I could get these nuts loose. So let me pull you over here and I will show you what's going on down here. So this part was a little tricky because I had never really done it before. So it took me a minute to wrap my head around it. And also I kept kind of missing little steps as I was doing it. But once I got this broke loose, the big point of that was so I could adjust the end to line up with the pitman arm and go back in the hole. Uh, but then I didn't have my steering wheel quite straight, and then I didn't have my wheel quite straight because when I jacked it up, it had turned a little bit when I was messing with all the steering. So I had to do it a couple times, which was a little frustrating, but you know, that's my life. Uh, so a couple tips. Make sure your wheel's straight, just kind of eyeball it and make sure it looks straight. This one appears a little crooked, but I think it's because it's jacked up and there's no tire on there, so we'll kind of feel it out. I might have to come back and readjust this a little bit later, but make sure your steering wheel is straight too, because once you put this on, that is determines your steering. If your wheels are straight with your steering wheel being straight, the Jeep will go straight when your wheels are right up and down. So that's kind of the whole point of this. But basically I just kept adjusting this and making sure everything was straight until I got it back in the hole. And now I'm ready to tighten that down, snug this down real good and then I can move on to doing the hoses. So let me give you a quick look at everything kind of straightened out so you can see what I'm talking about. So this is the front wheel. It's pretty straight and aligned with that back wheel. So I think that's pretty good. It looks good to the eye. Looks a little off in the camera with the angles of the fenders, but it looks pretty straight in person. This one looks like it's kind of stuck out a little bit, but I, I think it's just because it's jacked up in the air and there's no tire on it. I think it'll be fine. And then the last big thing to do is to make sure your steering wheel is straight up and down. And now that I've got everything aligned, I've got the nut on there, it's holding the uh, drag link and everything in place. This all looks straight. So I think I'm good to go ahead and tighten that down. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten all of this back down. Get that finger tight. And then I'm gonna come up here and get this castle nut a little snug. Okay, so now that the castle nut is snugged, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this guy down. Use my foot for a little extra torque. Okay, that should be good. So now I think we can move on to uh, reconnecting the lines up top. So before we move on to the hoses, I'm going to go ahead and start torquing things to spec. So this is 55 foot pounds. It's a pain to get the actual uh, torque wrench on there, but got very little range of motion in here too. Okay. I think that's going to have to be it. We'll check it, make sure we can get a cotter pin through. Yes, we can. So that one's good. Uh, now let's move on to these guys. One thing I do want to mention is this nut here that holds the pitman arm to the steering gearbox. That one is supposed to be torqued to 185 foot pounds. Uh, I, my wrench does not go up that high, so I'm just going to have to trust that my impact did it good enough because I ran it until it wouldn't go anymore. So let's hope for that. And then for these three, I can't figure out exactly what these are called. Uh, the closest thing, or at least the one I think it is, are gear to frame bolts. 
So if that's right, these are supposed to be torqued to 70 foot-pounds. So that's what I'm going to go with. Okay, so now I'm going to throw back on my uh, skid plate for my steering gearbox, and that requires this one, and then two under here. I'm not going to record that because you might not have that. That's just for this. So I'm going to knock that out real quick, and I'll be back with you in a moment. One thing I forgot to mention when I was putting the castle nut back on, don't forget to put your cotter pin back in. So I'm going to stick this in real quick. All right, so you stick it through, and then you spread the ends. That way, the nut can't back off. We are finally back up top to reconnect these hoses. I'm going to start by connecting this one on the bottom here. So that is the hose that is tucked out of the way over here. Ugh. So this one had that weird kind of hose clamp on it. So I'm just going to use a regular hose clamp now because that other one had to be bent and torn off. Okay. And now you just push this one on. Uh, all right, that's on. So I'm going to tighten this clamp down real fast. So like with anything, when you change out parts like this, just be sure to come back in a couple days or, you know, once a day when you're driving it. Just make sure it's not leaking from anywhere. And then check your bolts after a little bit of driving to make sure they're, they're still tight. That feels pretty good. Yeah, it's not coming off. So now we're ready to move on to the top one. That's this guy right here. And it's got a cover on the end. So we're going to take that off. And this one already has the little rubber seal on there. I'm not going to bother to smear the fluid around it because there's a bunch in the hole it's going into anyway. So we're just going to set this guy up. And this is a 5 8 All right, that feels pretty good. You don't have to go crazy tight on these. Uh, there are torque specs for them, but obviously I can't get my torque ratchet on there. So um, it, I think they're 25 foot pounds or something. It's, so it's not a lot of torque. You can kind of just snug those pretty good and you should be about right. Uh, yeah, so I think that's all hooked up here. Got this little guy, I'm gonna move it down to where it almost touches other things that way. Kind of prevents any wear on the line. That looks good to me. Yeah, so I guess now all we have to do is fill this back up. Okay, guys, so with the power steering fluid, depending on the year of your Jeep, you could either use actual power steering fluid or ATF plus four. Um, 2003 to 06 uses the ATF, and then it's a uh, 97 to 2002 that use the power steering fluid for the TJs. So just be aware of that. You do not want to mix your fluids. That's never good. So I just picked up some ATF plus four from O'Reilly's. I'm going to top off my reservoir here and then hopefully here uh, pretty shortly I can have this back on the road and test it out. So I don't think you guys can see it, but uh, every few seconds it's kind of popping an air bubble and the level's going down. So as it's kind of getting that air out of the system, I'm going to go ahead and put my tire back on and then I'll top it off again and then I'll actually start it up and let it run for a minute and kind of cycle it through there and move the steering back and forth and kind of start to let the air escape hopefully and cycle the fluid through the system. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start the Jeep real quick and then I'll just kind of work the steering back and forth and hopefully we can burp some more bubbles out of it. Uh, it was really fighting me in the beginning. It didn't want to turn at all. It was almost like the wheel was blocked. And then I saw a big burp come out, and now I've actually got some power steering. So I'm going to go real quick, look at the reservoir. It might be hard to hear me up there because of all the noise. And then I'll top it off a little bit more. Oh, yeah, that's, that's plenty of me. So that's almost one full cord I put in. Uh, so I might have to get some out later, but I think that'll be okay. It should 
take more in. So what I think I'm going to do for a minute is probably just let this run, see if it goes down any lower while it's just sitting here. And then I'm going to move some vehicles out of the way and take this thing for a drive, test it out. Then I'll come back and I'll check it again to see the level. Okay, so I'm going to take this thing for a quick cruise around the block and see how it uh, steers. Okay. I'll tell you right off the bat, my steering wheel is not straight, so uh, that's going to need adjusted. I'm not actually uh, sure that I latched my tire carrier. One should probably do such a thing. Allow me to check that real quick. All right, it's latched now. Learn from me, kids. Learn from me. It doesn't appear to be all over the road, though, so that's good. You just have to adjust the uh, end of that drag link so I can get it straight. So I'll pull into the driveway nice and straight, and then I'll disconnect it, and I'll straighten the steering wheel and then I will adjust it to match. And I'll do that with the wheels on the ground this time, that way it's a little easier to do. Because with one wheel off, half jacked up, it was kind of hard to uh, see what straight was. I recently uh, didn't have heat, so I made a uh, heater core flush video. And let me just say, the uh, heat in here is pretty good again. Worth it. If you don't have heat, by chance in your TJ, go check out that video and get it nice and hot. Well, all right, guys, that pretty much wraps up the body of the video, which is changing out the steering gear box. Now I'm just going to tinker with my uh, alignment of my steering wheel a little bit. So if you want to stick around, I'll include a little bit more of that on the video. But otherwise, I'll see you guys on the next one. And I appreciate you watching. Uh, please drop me comments, likes, all that helps the videos. It helps me. So if you enjoy the content, please do that. And think about subscribing if you aren't already. I'll see you on the next one. So if you guys are like me and your steering wheel is not straight now, which you probably are if you're still watching the video, and that means we have a little bit more adjustment to do. So what I did first was pull into the garage with the, dre ah, with the Jeep driving completely straight. So I know the wheels are straight and it's driving how it should, but my steering wheel's crooked. So what I need to do now is come down here and disconnect your drag link from your pitman arm, and then you can straighten the steering wheel. And with the steering wheel straight and your wheel straight, you'll know exactly where this needs to go back into the pitman arm at. So then you'll have to break this nut loose or see, I didn't think about this earlier, but I have aftermarket steering. So if you have the um, stock steering, you have kind of an adjustment sleeve in the middle and you'll have like a kind of a nut on each side of that sleeve. So you'll loosen those and you'll spin that sleeve and that's what adjusts that for you. I can't remember 100%. I only ever did it once on the stock steering but it's not that hard, so that'll be how you guys will have to adjust it. But for me, I break this nut loose, and then I can adjust this end here longer or shorter to make up for the difference of whichever way this goes when I straighten the wheel. So that's what I'm gonna do first is, well, first I'll probably break this nut loose while it's stuck on there, it'll just be easier, and then I'm gonna take it off and straighten the wheel. All right, so I have taken the cotter pin out, took the castle nut off, and broke this loose. So now I'm going to pop this off of there, and as this settles slowly, I'm going to go straight in the steering wheel, and you'll see this move when I do it. So the steering wheel is straight now, and this should really no longer line up that great. It doesn't. So what it looks like I need to do is bring this out a little bit longer, which is the other way. <laughs> so that should be maybe one full turn. Let's take it back up and see how it looks. Yeah, I'd say that one full turn probably did it. Snug this nut down real quick. Put the castle nut back on. 
So as I'm tightening this up, I think that'll probably be it for this video because even if it's still a little off, you'll just do the same exact thing again uh, until you get it perfect or wherever you're comfortable having your steering wheel. So yeah, I think that's going to wrap up the video. I appreciate you guys watching. It's always a pleasure making these videos for everyone and I've always gotten good feedback on them. So hopefully this helps you guys out and maybe saves you a few hundred dollars from trying to take it to a shop to have them do it. So yeah, uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks.